Welcome to the installation and use guide of Chasing USB L kit. If you are using Chasing M2 Pro Max, first, loosen the steel clamp of the USB L transmitter kit. Remove the hand tight screws and the bottom quick release plate. Then install the USB L onto the kit. Tighten the steel clamp. Reattach the bottom quick release plate and tighten the hand tight screws. If your previous USB-L was the Chasing M2 Pro version, please install the adapter cable first. Install the quick release holder onto the support rod on top of the ROV. Then slide the USB-L transmitter into the quick release holder. Connect the USB-L cable to the 4-pin interface of the ROV's built-in docking station. This completes the installation of the USB-L transmitter. If you are using Chasing M2 Pro, first, loosen the steel clamp of the USB-L transmitter kit, then install the USB-L onto the kit, and tighten the steel clamp. Install the USB-L transmitter above the Chasing docking station, and secure it with screws. Connect the USB-L cable to the corresponding 4-pin interface of the Chasing docking station. Connect the docking station's cable to the ROV and fix it to the support rod of the ROV using screws. This completes the installation of the USB-L transmitter. First, loosen the steel clamp of the USB-L receiver kit. Connect the receiver cable to the kit interface. Then install the USB-L receiver onto the USB-L kit. Tighten the steel clamp. Connect the USB-L receiver to the short side of the float cable. If you are using the chasing adapter box, connect the long side of the float cable to the adapter box's USB-L interface. Connect the ROV buoyancy cable to the adapter box's ROV interface. Use a 3 meters cable to connect the controller to the adapter box's controller interface. This completes the installation of the USB-L receiver. If you are using the chasing control console, Connect the long side of the float cable to the 4-pin interface on the upper left side of the control console. Using the ROV adapter cable. Connect the ROV buoyancy cable to the 4-pin interface on the upper right side of the control console. Connect the external GPS to the USB interface of the control box. This completes the installation of the USB-L receiver. Before use, ensure that you're chasing GO-1, ROV firmware, adapter box firmware, USB-L firmware, and dock firmware are all updated to the latest version. If the chasing GO-1 on the control console is not the latest version, please download the latest chasing GO-1 installation package from the official website and manually install the update by placing it on a USB or other storage device. Connect to an available network. Open Chasing Go 1. Click the menu icon in the upper right corner. Go to the Help page. Open the Map Download page. Click on the desired area for operation. Click Download Current Area. Enter the Map Area name. Click OK to download the map. If you are using the Chasing Control Console, please download the offline map from the official website. Then, using a USB or other storage device, copy the offline map file to the corresponding directory. Open Chasing Go 1. Click the map icon in the upper right corner. Import the offline map. If you are using the Chasing Adapter Box, please turn on the remote control first, then turn on the adapter box. Wait for all the indicator lights to turn green. If you are using the chasing control console, please turn on the power of the control console, then start the control console, until the control console and ROV indicator lights are steady on. Click the icon in the bottom right corner to enter the dock interface. Then click the icon in the top right corner to manually add accessories. Select the corresponding interface. Click the USB-L transmitter icon to add the accessory. Go back to the dock interface. Click the USB-L switch. Enable the USB-L. Enter the IMU calibration interface. Pick up the USB-L receiver. Keep it more than one meter above the ground and away from signal interference. 
maintain six different angles, front, left side, right side, overturned, upright, and upside down, for 5 to 20 seconds each. Continue until the progress bar on the screen completes and indicates successful calibration. First, place all the devices on land. When you hear the sound of DDD, and the bottom left corner displays sync successful, then place the ROV into the water. Place the receiver in the water at a depth of 1 to 1.5 meters. Ensure there are no objects within 1 meter around it. The float should not touch the water surface. If you want to display GPS coordinates as a watermark on photos or videos, open the camera settings, scroll down, enable OSD, and add GPS coordinate watermark to photos or videos. Click the map icon in the bottom left corner to enter the USBL interface. The top of the screen will display USBL status, compass, adapter box signal strength, battery level, ROV attitude, and other information. You can use two fingers to zoom in or out on the map. The map on the screen will display the position of the ROV and the adapter box as well as the ROV's trajectory. Click on the ROV or adapter box icon to display the corresponding device's GPS coordinates. Once the positions of the ROV and the adapter box are confirmed to match the actual locations on the map, click the lock icon to lock the coordinates of the adapter box to avoid position offset. Click the path icon to display or hide the ROV's path. You can also choose to clear the path. Click the center point icon to switch between displaying the adapter box or ROV as the center point. When using the USBL, log files in CSV and GPX formats will be automatically generated in the log directory on the ROV's built-in SD card. You can extract the corresponding log files based on the date and time displayed in the file name. If you open the GPX format file with mapping software, you can view the ROV's trajectory. If you open the CSV file with a spreadsheet software, you can view the GPS data.